In the modern era, it's becoming less and less common to find players who are local to the clubs they play for, and that's also true of York City. But one player that bucked that trend was a no-nonsense defender, a local lad, who captained City in some of our finest matches. And that was, of course, Steve Tootill. Steve, you made your debut for York City in January 1987 as an 18-year-old. But already by that time, you come through quite a few stages in the development in local football as a local youngster. Can you tell us how you got from the beginning to that debut? Well, basically, we, we dad started a football team, Hatsby and Wigginton. And uh, I wasn't particularly bothered about playing, to be honest with you. And, uh, but because my dad had set the team up, I, I played, began to enjoy myself, um, and then gradually worked my way up through York boys, uh, North Yorkshire boys. Uh, had trials for England schoolboys, got in there, England schoolboys, and then eventually got uh, a YTS at York. And as a local lad, you must have been really proud on that debut to wear a City shirt. Oh, it was great. I mean, everybody wants to play for the local team. Everybody wants to be a professional footballer at the end of the day. Uh, it was just fantastic for me to put the shirt on and play for York. And there aren't many like you who have come through the York system. Yeah, I, t I mean, I, I stayed there for a very long time. I think it was about 12 or 13 years. And, um, it's unheard of nowadays, I think, and, and for players to get testimonials and things, and uh, it's a bit of a shame, really. It shows you the different way football's going now. So, in 1993, the side that played at Wembley, I'm sure when you got there, all the lads were, were a bit awestruck and wandering around the place, but for you, you'd, you'd played there before? I played there before with England schoolboys, yeah. I mean, it was fantastic. Uh, what an experience that was. Played there twice. <laughs> I'd give a penalty away <laughs> against Germany, uh, foul. Um, but no, it was fantastic to turn up there with York because, um, albeit I was sub, as everybody knows, I came on and then the famous handball, but it was just a great experience for everybody. And at the end, to get the result promotion, it was fantastic. So, during your City career, you played in some of the club's finest matches, and obviously you're whopping 354 appearances. And you're also the captain of quite a lot of those games. So, what are the games that really stick out in your mind? I would say... Uh, it's got to be the Man U, the two Man U games, going there and beating Manchester United 3-0. Um, they had some quality players out there, Beckham, Giggs, Pallister, Bruce. Uh, and to go there and beat them 3-0 on their own batch was fantastic. And then to get them back at York again, although we got beat, we went through an aggregate, you know, playing against the likes of Cantona was fantastic. I mean, I think playing in that game, I think we were 2-0 down after, I think it was probably 12 minutes. <laughs> I looked across to Andrew McMillan and I thought, oh, this could be a long, long, long evening, but we got through it. and So that has to be the two games, has to be the highlight, and then obviously the promotion at Wembley, I would say. Now, I can't interview you without asking you about Wembley and, and the <laughs> handball. Um, last minute of extra time, mm. gave away a, a penalty for handball. Can you take through your memory of what happened? And, and it's one of those ones which is almost a bit, a bit mad. It was a bit mad. <laughs> I, I can remember sitting on the bench and I'm looking at Paul Sankley and I think he's going to come off here. And I'm, and Alan Little's going, I don't really want to put you on, because you don't want to put a, a def especially a defender or a change up when they're doing so well. And Alan Little appointed, he says, look, sorry, I'm going to have to stick you on. I was like, all right, so you get, get yourself all fired up. And I think I was on the pitch a minute, the ball came across. And as I recall, the centre forward was behind me and I just raised my hand to, to get momentum. But as I raised my hand, it came in contact with the ball. And it looked as though I punched the ball. Hence, everybody calls me Superman now. But uh, that's the one thing everybody asks me. Everybody asked me, but it was just a spare of the moment thing, um, not intentional. Because your emotions must have been all over the place because, you know, it could have, obviously, then the game went to penalties, we won, so the relief must have been. Relief was unbelievable. <laughs> I never watched the penalties. I had my back. If you ever see it on the video, I had my back facing the other way. But um, I can remember Paul Barnes coming up to me, what are you doing? I was going, <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what I was doing, to be honest with you. But uh, thankfully, we got through, didn't we? I think Ginniff scored the last penalty. Uh, which was great, like, and we went up, so I was so, forgiven. So was it your round on the way home? <laughs> yeah, it was a big round, yeah, on the way home, yeah. And as you mentioned, this this led to you being nicknamed Superman. Superman, yeah, yeah. I mean, somebody's done a piece from a testimonial. They did a poem, and uh, as me dressed, well, not me, as me, head, it bores on Superman's body. But uh, everybody passes me out and stick their hand up like in the Superman impression, which is quite funny, but I'll never live it down, will I? One set of games that very rarely seems to be mentioned are those two games against Stockport in the, the following year mm. in the playoff semi-finals and obviously you were captain in that mm -hmm. of those games. Thinking about that narrow defeat, do you ever dwell on that and think what 
might have been for your career and for the club if we'd got promotion again? I do, yeah, because I, mean, I think we had a very, very good team that year and we were so unfortunate. I think we got beat, I think it was about the 86th minute. Um, it's just one of them games, isn't it? It could have gone either way and it just went their way, unfortunately. I think it was, um, I like called Beaumont, somebody scored. I ended, ended up playing with him at Chesterfield. And uh, yeah, I mean, to go up another division would have been absolutely fantastic. And who knows, my career might have taken off a bit better and a few of the other players might have gone on to do a few more things. As it happens, it wasn't to be. But So after over a decade of loyal service, you're rewarded with a testimonial and a really well-attended game against Middlesbrough. So what are your uh, memories of that and how much did you enjoy that? Oh, I mean, again, that was absolutely brilliant. I mean, um, Brian Robson, Royce. They flew in from Italy the same day and I put them up in the hotel just off the A19. Uh, they had a sleep in the afternoon and then came and played the game. I mean, that was brilliant for me, to, especially for him to turn his first team out. It would have been quite easy for him just to say, look, I'm going to put a reserve team out. Um, but to get 7,000, just over 7,000, was, it was a brilliant night for me, to be honest with you. And I had a brilliant year. I had a committee that worked ever so well for me. And the committee was absolutely brilliant. They did golf days and everything it was really good. Now, sadly, like too many players of your generation, the kind of parting of the ways with the club was a bit acrimonious, a bit like mm. Andy McMillan in a way. Mm. Um, and Douglas Craig seemed intent on, on getting rid of you after an incident at Rotherham when you got sent off. So mm. that must have been quite hard to take after being a loyal servant. It, it was hard to say. I mean, I was having a tough time at the time. Um, I was actually playing with a hernia. I needed a hernia operation. Um, I had a bit of a fallout with Alan Little after the game. Obviously, I got sent off, deserved to get sent off. Took me punishment, two weeks' wages, which I paid. Um, and things just took a downward spiral. I ended up having my hernia operation, then my knee went, my patella tendon went. And it was actually the game, I got put on the list after the Bristol Rovers game. I limped off. And Trish came to me, I don't know, she shouldn't have done really, and she said, like, you've been put on the list tonight. I was like, oh, that was mortifying. So I even knew before Alan Little told me. But I hadn't played well for probably. For York, probably for about 15 months, I was having a bit of a rough patch to be honest with you, going through a bad patch. So maybe it was a good thing in a way to leave in a way. Sorry to leave on a, on a it wasn't a bad note. I'd have liked to have played well, left on a good note. But it went well for me then after that, when I went to Darwin. Because you proved a point, I suppose, to Douglas Craig and to Alan Little and to the club by going and still continuing a successful career. So well, that's like right, you didn't, yeah. didn't disappear. Yeah, I didn't disappear. I mean, quite a lot of players do, but. Uh, I think because I'd been there for such a long time, I'd probably gone a little bit stale, to be honest with you, and I just needed a new challenge, and then <laughs> going to Darling at the bottom of the league, that was a big challenge, just to stay up. And we weren't getting paid and all sorts, you know, for months when I was at Darling, so... But uh, we got through it, and I got through it, and then ended up at Chesterfield in the end, which was good. Finally, it's a, it's a very different club now. How much involvement do you have with the club, and did you still look out for the results and get along to uh, kick at Crescent? I have no input at all. I don't, don't, don't even speak to, I hardly know anybody to be honest with you there now. I, uh, the, the, the player, not the player, the physio, Jeff Miller, his son plays for the little lad side, Oswaldwick, and uh, I see him most Sundays when we catch up, have a little bit of a gossip about the game and stuff. Um, I look out for him all the time, as I do with Darlington and Chesterfield to be honest with you, but York's the first one I look for all the time. I'm just praying this year that they'll go back, go back up and get back into the league be really good for the club and good for the fans because I think the fans have put so much into it, haven't they? So. Wise words. Well, thank you very much for your time, Steve. Thank you very much. Thank you.